All right, so this is the last video 2020, but the first video that I'm filming in the new filming room. So let me know what you think. I'm sure there's gonna be some kind of, you know, situations to work out, lighting, sound, whatever, but hopefully it looks good. Fingers crossed, we'll figure it out together. But I'm stoked because today we're gonna be talking about the best makeup of 2020. So the way I like to do these videos each year, and I'll link my past ones down below from past years, 2018, 2019, pretty sure I have ones from before that too. So the way that I like to do these videos are not necessarily products that came out in 2020. A lot of these did, but some of them I just discovered in 2020. So these are my yearly favorites, my most used products, most reached for. If I didn't mention something from a category, like I don't have a mascara or a bronzer in here, it means that it's still my favorite from last year, so check out last year's video. And I did go back and rewatch last year's video, and I still stand by all those recommendations. Most of those are still products that I use daily or very consistently, so definitely check out that video. I'm not gonna be repeating any of those products. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do while you're watching, you can give it a thumbs up. Let's get into the yearly favorites. It's been a year, man. We're not gonna talk about it, we're gonna talk about makeup. Here we go. What do we even start off with? I'm not gonna go in any order. I think I'm just gonna pull stuff out. Yep, let's do that. Okay, let's start off with a product that did launch this year in 2020 and that was definitely a favorite. <laughs> the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Powders. So I use these both for underneath my eyes and for all over my face. I use the shade 110 for underneath my eyes, 120 for all over my face. I don't know why I just looked at that as I said 110. I have these shades memorized because I use them every day. How many times have I told you guys about these powders? If you are someone who struggles with finding a powder that looks just soft and pretty on your skin, so many powders look just very cakey on me. This one is a soft matte powder. It does have a matte finish, but it doesn't look cakey. It is very finely milled. This powder doesn't have like crazy coverage or anything. Like I would not call it, you know, full coverage powder or anything, but it doesn't take away the coverage of my foundation underneath, which a lot of powders do. So I would say this one is kind of just like a medium coverage powder. Personally, I like to use it with a powder brush and just set my liquid foundation like in this area and on my forehead. That's the way I like to use it. And then I also like to use this guy, which is another 2020 favorite. I actually have backup, so I just was gonna show you it in the packaging instead of showing you a dirty one. But this is the AOA Microfiber Wonder Blender. These are $1.55 on Shop Miss A. It's basically just what it is, a microfiber sponge. This one is the softest one I've found and the bounciest and squishiest. I freaking love this thing to swirl the shade 110. I swirl it and then press it underneath my eyes and it gives the most flawless application of powder under there. And then I also love using it to press on face powder as well. You can use this with powder foundation, any kind of face powder, loose face powder, whatever the powder, this thing applies powder amazing for the price. You can't beat it. So I have a few different eyeshadows I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna kind of just throw them in in between, not do them all at once, but definitely as far as my matte, everyday shades go. This has been one of my go-tos. I love just light, neutral, mattes, cool tones, typically what I reach for on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't have to buy this whole palette. This is These are Makeup Geek shadows, by the way. I don't think I said that. You can just choose whichever singles you want to purchase. But Makeup Geek did a whole rebrand this year. I do have a Makeup Geek affiliate code. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. Do whatever you want, whoa, hair flip. I just love the quality of the Makeup Geek shadows. I just find that whenever I use the matte shades, they're so buttery that they just like blend into one another without me really having to try to blend them. And I love some of the cool tone shades. I'm gonna put my most used shades down below in the description box if you wanna know, and I'll break them down as far as cool tones and warm tones. So if you're only into warm tones, you could get those. If you're only into cool tones, you could get those. But definitely Bedrock and Beach Please in combination with this lightest one right here. So pale. If you just wanna get three and you're into cool tones, you could just go with those and call it a day. So in my 2019 favorites video last year, I mentioned the Physicians Formula Eye Booster in waterproof, which you can tell the difference between the waterproof and the non-waterproof because this one has like the little teardrop kind of things on the outside. Still love this. 
great eyeliner. Like if you just want to walk into a physical drugstore and you need an eyeliner recommendation, I still stand by this one. I think it's awesome. You have to get the blackest black shade, by the way. But if you don't mind waiting for an online order from a website that takes a long time, but that is half the price, this eyeliner is my number one now. I discovered this in 2020 and it is amazing. Get on Yes Style. It's the McQueen New York Deep Black Waterproof Pen Liner. And this is around $5 on Yes Style. It is black, dude. It lasts all day. I wear it every single time I do eyeliner. Have it on right now. Anytime I do my wake, my, my wake up. Anytime I do my makeup now, I'm wearing this. I love this because it's it's basically the exact same kind of tip as the Physician's Formula. They're both brush tips. I don't like felt tip at all. So if you're a felt tip person, you won't like either of these. Both of these are brush tips, which I find so much easier to control because I don't get this staggering kind of line. It's a very smooth, easy application. So if you like the Physician's Formula, I really think you would love the McQueen. It's slightly smaller than the Physician's Formula even. So I feel like I get a little bit easier of a wing even than Physician's Formula. And this one is really easy. So that's saying a lot. The Queen is a bit blacker and I feel like it stays on a little bit better as well. This one does not budge. If my eyes get watery, it stays on. I have sensitive eyes and this one doesn't burn at all. So if you don't mind waiting, that's the one thing with Yes Style. Their orders take forever to ship because it's shipping from, I'm pretty sure Korea. I've tried like $60 Tom Ford ones, Too Faced, Hourglass, all of them. And this $5 one is the best. Okay, speaking of Yes Style, since we're on that topic, let's get this one out of the way. So this is the Clavu Lip Sleeping Pack. Last year I mentioned the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask and personally, I love that one still, but I like that one for using during the day and that's how I mentioned that last year, not as an overnight mask because that one gives you that like really pretty plump lip mask, but it has like a little bit of color to it. This one I like using as an actual like overnight kind of treatment and this is more affordable. This one I believe is around like five to seven dollars you can get it on sale for on Yes Style. It's really nice packaging for being so affordable. It's like a frosted glass packaging. This is a Korean brand. It has like a, a subtle kind of vanilla scent. It's not like too overpowering. And I find that this one really moisturizes my lips well, is very actually nourishing. The Laneige one just doesn't do that for me as like an overnight mask. This one is like an actual repairing my lip kind of mask. Okay, standout blush. I'm wearing it right now. This blush, when I first saw it and tried it, I thought it was just gonna be way too dark for my skin tone, but every time I use this blush, it just blows my friggin' mind. Okay, this is the e.l.f. Always Hazy Blush. And when you look at it, it just seems like there's gonna be like nothing super special about it, but this is from their Primer Infused Blush line. And every blush I've tried in this line is beautiful, like the formula of these are just really nice, but there's something about the shade of this blush. It almost reminds me of Mac Melba a little bit. That was the same kind of thing where like you put that blush on and you were like, I don't know what's happening here, but there's something magical happening. It's not a fully matte blush. There is a little bit of a sheen to it and you can see it on my face right now, like in the light, it does have a bit of a glow. So if you're like a fully matte blush person, you wouldn't like this. But if you want a fully matte blush that does a similar kind of look, I also love the Essence Blush in Befitting. And that was also a 2020 discovery. Somehow in the move, I completely lost that. So I need to reorder that, but that would have been in this video if I could find it. So I'm just gonna pop in a video here, but that is the same kind of thing like that. That blush reminds me of a MAC blush. And I've said that before, but the formula of that, the color, everything, 100% reminds me of a MAC blush as well. There's something about it. So if you like a matte blush, that is my matte blush recommendation. It takes a lot for me to be like impressed by a blush and both of these do that for me. Okay, I'm gonna quickly get my three most worn, most loved lip liners out of the way. So let's start off with the high-end one and then there's kind of like a middle price point and then a drugstore one. So high-end one, in the past three, four months, definitely my most reached for one is the Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude in the shade, uh, wait, Icon oh, shade, Iconic Nude is the shade. This one definitely needs to be resharpened. It's fully flat right now. 
That's the shade of this one. It looks way darker. I usually use it pretty light and I kind of just put it like right on my lower lip and then right on the top to kind of create more of like a fuller look. And then I go in with like a really light lipstick and that's how I've been using it. Like I said, I've been reaching for this pretty much every time I do my lipstick lately. And it's a really nice tone. As you can see, it doesn't have like too much of a peach tone to it. I'm gonna swatch these two next to it and you'll see the difference in tones, especially if you have a darker skin tone, like this would be very wearable for different skin tones. As you can see, like it's pretty dark on my skin tone. This one I love because I can use this all over my lips and it's like the perfect formula for doing that, but also tone if you like cool toned lips. I love cool toned lips, by the way, if you're new here. Uh, like that's my jam. Right now I have on like more of a peachy kind of combo. It's just cause I have like golds going on and I wanted to warm it up a little bit, but this one is Sephora the Nudist. And these are called the Rouge Gel Liners. And this is kind of like the middle price point one. The thing I love about this is you don't have to sharpen it. You can just twist it up. It does have a shine to it. It's not matte at all. Oh, look at that color. Oh my God. If you like cool toned liners, this is like the perfect cool tone. Again, it looks, it looks way darker than it actually looks on your lips. On my lips, it looks like pretty light. Like when I put it on, it's definitely like a, it's not like a dead nude, but it's definitely not like, doesn't look that dark. It's perfect for layering with stuff or just wearing on its own. And it does have like a bit of a kind of like creamy sheen to it. So again, you can use it all over your lips too. Like just wear it as a lipstick if you want. And last up, drugstore option, Koki 515 Warm Nude. I use this in an IGTV video. If you wanna see it like in action just really quickly, you can head over to my Instagram. But this one is also retractable, which is nice so you don't have to sharpen it. I'm wearing this one right now. And I paired it with this lipstick today. This is NARS Belle Du Jour. So this one is more of like a peachy color, but I'll show you what it looks like on its own and you can really alter this one to have it look you know like more cool tone depending on what lipstick you put over so i like this one for that reason you can make it look more cool tone or more warm like it did today so there it is right there it's similar to charlotte tilbury but it still has a little bit more of like a rust kind of look to it so whenever i'm doing my lips these are just like my tried and true reach for i know they're gonna look good anytime kind of lip liners if i'm doing a nude lip so these are definitely my most reached for in 2020. let's talk about a product that i definitely talked about a ton towards the beginning of the year but I haven't talked about recently because like I said, I've been using the CoverGirl powders, but if you watched my channel towards the beginning of the year, this was definitely something I raved about a ton. This is the Laura Mercier Secret Blurring Powder for under eyes. So this is in the shade one. This I still have backups of because I was obsessed with it at the beginning of the year. This is a pressed version of their Secret Blurring Powder. And I freaking love it. I used it again today because I just wanted to be like reminded you know, for this video of what I liked about it. And basically it is just a super, super soft, fine powder. As you can see though, it does have a brightening white effect to it, which again, I like because how many times have I given the powder spiel? But for those of you who are new here, a lot of powders like just totally remove the coverage underneath my eyes. So if I use any kind of loose powder or translucent powder, it's like some weird shit happens where the coverage underneath my eyes just disappears. So I like to use powders that have a little bit of coverage. So I'm like adding coverage back in. And then it is very rare where I find a powder like this, where it's like a translucent powder, but because this one actually has like a little bit of that hint of white in there, it can work and it actually like brightens up my under eyes rather than making it darker, which a lot of like translucent powders can. Not only that, but because it's so finely milled, it just doesn't make my under eyes look cakey. I do find that the brush or like sponge or however you apply this is key. So I have a whole video that goes really in depth about this product and how I apply it. So I'll link that in the eye and down below if you wanna know more about this. Okay, let's talk about this because I feel like this was a total like gem find for me, but I didn't give it enough love in my videos, but I secretly was obsessed with it. But this is the Elsie Jewels in the shade Pearl. I did talk about this in one of my Raves and Rejects. I'm pretty sure, I hope. This is friggin' amazing, you guys. This is so underrated. If you are a bride doing wedding makeup, a makeup artist, or just into these kind of tones. They do have other colors of this, but like if you're into these kind of champagne tones, if you like putting this on your inner corner, all over your lid, 
this thing is so insanely metallic. Like, look at that. Let me just show you up close. Getting too excited. Look at that friggin' sheen when it hits the light. It is like, it's so blinding. It seems like it's just blown out, like on my skin tone, but it's actually, it's that blinding. I wish I could show you on someone that was a little bit tanner, but it's that insane. I love using this for my inner corner. I've been really into the like really intense inner corner lately, and I just love putting this as an inner corner pop. I wanna get more shades of this, but Elsie also looks friggin' insane all over the lid. Definitely this year was not when I discovered Catrice. It was before, so I feel like if I don't mention that, people are gonna be like, what about Catrice? In the comments, still love Catrice Dewy Glow. However, this year I discovered Wet n Wild, not the natural finish, so ignore that. I purchased the wrong one and I just wanna use this up before I repurchase it. The one I'm recommending is the Wet n Wild Original setting spray. Just get the original one. The natural finish one is nice, but I feel like the original setting spray is where it's at, okay? If you did a blind test of this against Urban Decay All Nighter, I think this would beat out Urban Decay All Nighter easily. I think this setting spray is amazing. I love that it doesn't super alter the finish of a foundation because sometimes you don't want to alter the finish. A lot of times I do use setting sprays to make my foundation more dewy and I want that, but sometimes I don't. Sometimes like today, I already had a super dewy finish. I'll tell you what I wore in a second. And I didn't want my setting spray to add any more dew. I just wanted to set my face. And so when I have a situation like that, I'll go in with the Wet n Wild, not the natural finish, just the original. And it sets my makeup, but it I actually think this makes my makeup stay on longer. For being from the drugstore for being a few dollars, I think it's totally worth giving a go. I think it's amazing. So let's talk about a couple foundations. I'm not sure if I'm doing a best foundations of 2020 video this year or not. I feel like I, I will probably end up doing it, but We'll see. But I'm gonna mention a couple of standouts here just in case. Let's start off with the one that definitely did not come out this year. Neither of these came out this year, but this one is like hella old. This was from what, like at least 10 years ago probably, but I discovered it or really like thoroughly started testing it this year. I obviously had heard about MAC Face and Body before that, but I really started giving it a shot this year, like a fair shot. And this is the MAC Face and Body Foundation. I had obviously heard people rave about this for years, but the idea of it never appealed to me up until this year where I like really started embracing lighter coverage foundations. But there is something special about this product. It is so long lasting. And the thing I love about this is that it actually sets down, but not in a not tacky way, just in a like very long lasting way where you don't have to worry about it budging. The best way to apply this is with your fingers. You can build it up. It is extremely long lasting. If you're someone who wants one of those foundations where you want your freckles to show through, you want your skin to show through, you don't want it to look like you're wearing makeup, you want something that feels like your skin and just looks natural, this really is the way to go. There is a learning curve with it. I will say that. So if you try it out like the first couple times and you're like, I don't know, man, give it a go. Watch some YouTube tutorials on it. I, I still wanna do a video all about this and like the best way to apply it because there really is a learning curve. But once you figure it out and figure out the best way to apply it on your skin, it really is such a unique and special product and I really love it. I'm in the shade N1, by the way. It is a little bit dark. It's not a perfect shade match for me, so that's the only thing. All right, and then other foundation. I like feel bad mentioning this because they did discontinue it. However, I'm trusting Arna Lane on this one because I haven't personally had a chance to give it a go yet. It's arriving in the mail, should be here any day now. But Purito did come out with a new version of this, and apparently Arna said it's like the exact same thing, just with better ingredients, so. Arna, I'm trusting you. <laughs> I am gonna test it for you guys when it comes into my mailbox, but this is the Purito Snail Clearing BB Cream. I wear the shade 21 Light Beige. I'm wearing it right now. I literally wanna put this on my face anytime I have the ability to do my makeup. It is that good. I've raved about this so many times. I feel just like a broken record at this point, but you can, Wear it light coverage and it looks like skin or you can get complete full coverage and it still looks like skin. It just wears incredible on my skin. It doesn't look or feel makeup-y. It gives you a glow. 
it's just, it's the best. I haven't had a day where I put this on and it looks crappy. So of course they discontinued this. However, like I said, apparently they came out with the exact same thing. It just doesn't have essential oils in it or anything anymore. So I definitely will be reviewing this. I wanna save like a drop of this left so I can do a side by side because I'm almost out of this too when the other one comes in. But I felt like I had to mention this because it's literally what I wanna reach for every time I do my makeup. This compared to CYO, which was also discontinued, just to give you a reference, I, I like this more than CYO. So if that tells you anything, like that's where I'm at with this product, okay? Okay, in 2020, I definitely discovered my favorite brow way, what am I saying? Brow technique, there we go, there's the words. Brow technique and also brow products, which are these two, which I've talked about again, so many times. I mean, that's the whole point of this video, right? Products you've heard me talk about five million times because they're my favorites of the year, but Urban Decay Brow Blade in the shade, why can't I never remember the shade of this? Dark Drapes and then the Milani Brow Pencil Precision Brow in the shade Medium Brown. It's what I have on right now. The shape turns out different every time. Sometimes they turn out bushier, sometimes they look shitty, sometimes they look great. I never know how they're gonna turn out. However, I've just been liking the kind of like fuller, fluffier looking brows and I use these two products almost every single time I do my brows. The lasting power of brow blade is awesome. It literally stays on all day. It doesn't fade, it doesn't smudge. It's amazing. And you do get a brow pencil on the other side of this. I never use it, but you get one. This is by far the best brow pencil I've tried. And I love that this one is so incredibly tiny. I use this to bring down the front a little bit and then also add like a little bit right here. And it's just the perfect shade. It's the perfect shape. It's the perfect amount of waxiness for what I like. These two together have just been awesome. What else can I say about these? So this year, a lot of my favorite products were discontinued. I did a whole video on it. I will link in the eye down below. So my Revlon Pore Reducing Primer was discontinued, but I did find a replacement for it. And this is the Haley's Beauty Refine Face Primer, Smoothing Primer, whatever. First off, love the packaging of this. I think it's the cutest thing ever. I love how tiny it is and lightweight, perfect for just like throwing in your makeup bag, doesn't take up a lot of space. But besides the cute packaging, it actually is a great smoothing primer and you see a difference with this one. On my skin, when I put it around my nose area, this is where I have like the most noticeable pores on me and you can actually see it like smoothing out and filling in my pores. I haven't found with any of my foundations that it does any like crazy things as far as just the, you know, affecting the foundation or getting like clumpy or weird like some smoothing primers can. It doesn't break me out. I would say literally like 98% of smoothing primers that claim to be, you know, pore filling and smoothing, on me at least, aren't actually doing that whatsoever. This one I see a difference with, I think is worth it. These bad boys, my two favorite glosses of all time from e.l.f. because these are the perfect, perfect light nude shades. I've raved about these so many times, I'm almost out of this guy. This is the e.l.f. Lip Plumping Gloss in the shade Peach Bellini, and then this one's in Pink Cosmo. Pink Cosmo is what you would guess, just a little bit more pink, and then Peach Bellini is a little bit lighter and a little bit more, I don't even think it's a little bit more peachy, I think it's just a little bit more like neutral nude, but if you're into like the light, light, nudes, like if you're around my skin tone and have a hard time finding glosses that are like actually light, we can just, let's put on um, Peach Bellini right now. I put a little bit of it on actually earlier, but let me add a little bit more. I love how just like glassy and plumping these make my lips look too. The way I usually like to wear these is either on their own or just with a little bit of lip liner, no lipstick, and then just put these on because they have enough color to where you don't really need a lipstick. I love how they're not overly sticky. Good formula. They are a little bit tingling. I don't find them to be like uncomfortable. And these are definitely my most reach for most used glosses of the year. So in 2020, I did a favorite drugstore highlighters video and high-end highlighters video. So I didn't wanna like throw in a bunch of highlighters into this video since you can go back and watch those videos if you wanna know my favorites. So I just wanted to mention one that did stand out to me this year and that I reach for a lot on a day-to-day -day basis and that I'm wearing right now on my face and that I think is so underrated. This is the AOA again from Shop Miss A. So this one is a dollar or a dollar 50. I'm about to hit pan on this one. This is their Velour highlight in the shade Sometimes. And this is a cream highlight, but 
not cream in like traditional sense. It's kind of like the ColourPop formula where it's more of like a bouncy, you know, kind of cream where it just has like, oh, <laughs> the top just fell off, you know, dollar makeup. It just has that like bouncy kind of feel to it where it's not too sticky and I have weird skin with that stuff. Like if I try and put cream on top of powder, you know, weird stuff happens. So this one, I can actually put this on top of powder and it doesn't do weird stuff, but that's what I did today. I did set my face first right here and then put this on top and it was totally fine. I just love the tone of this. I love the effect that it gives. It's not like too glittery, it's soft, it is just stunning and I just find myself always reaching for this. Two concealers that I don't necessarily think you need both of these, so I'm kind of like recommending them together because I think it's kind of like either or. I kind of use them in the similar ways. Let's first talk about Becca. This year, I kind of started not setting my under eyes because, actually, did I do that in 2019? I don't think so. Most often, if I'm not wearing foundation, I'll still put on under eye concealer just to kind of brighten my eyes and make me not look totally dead, but not set it with powder. If I set it with powder without having foundation on and like the whole deal, things go downhill real quick and it just does not look good on my skin. I know some people can do that. Some people can put like translucent powder on for me. It, do it doesn't work, okay? So when I'm in that kind of situation, I will do one of these two products. So the first is the Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector in the shade Light to Medium. So this is a corrector. So it's salmon tone, which is really nice for dark circles because if you have any kind of darkness, it's usually purple tone. So salmon will kind of like, you know, counteract that and brighten it up. This actually has a really good coverage. It is very sticky tacky. So if that bothers you, you would not like this. It definitely is like a very sticky formula. It doesn't dry down matte or anything. I don't mind that. I love the brightness that it gives and it's very moisturizing. So if you have dry under eyes, I think that you would probably really like this one. The other one, I like this as just like an all over concealer too, like to set with powder or to use as a spot concealer. So this one I like in different ways as well. It's actually one of my favorite concealers. I mentioned it in a past Raise and Rejects video and I feel like this concealer is totally underrated. It's the Youngblood Ultimate Concealer in the shade Fair. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm like about to hit pan on this one. And this is a full coverage concealer. This gives my under eyes a ton of coverage, covers anything, covers acne, covers it all. I've been getting like a lot of breakouts down here again and I've just been using this with my fingers or brush and it's been covering everything. And this one I can use on days where like I'll go in with the Purito and then go in with this and I don't set my face at all, like with powder on my under eyes or on my face and it's totally fine. It's not like my absolute favorite concealer if I'm using it solely to set my face on like a full face day with powder, like I would definitely go with NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer over this. Like if you're just looking for, you know, my go-to all-time favorite concealer, I would say go with this one. However, this is definitely a 2020 favorite. Same with this. I use both of these super frequently. All right, we're coming down to the last few here, folks. We have another e.l.f. favorite. This little quad here has definitely been another one that I reach for all the time. This is Cream and Sugar. I've said this before, but these feel like high-end shadows to me. I love this shade so much, again, for the inner corner brightening up, using all over the lid, super good to travel with because they're so small. These are so, so soft and buttery and insanely pigmented, the mattes and the metallic shades, I mean, they're awesome quality. You would never know they were so cheap. All right, next up we have my favorite makeup sponge, which is this Koki makeup sponge. You can get Koki at Rite Aid. This is $5 and it is friggin' awesome, you guys. This sponge is so soft, so bouncy, amazing. If you can find this by you, 100% pick it up. Also love the Haley's Beauty one, but this one is so good from the drugstore. All right, and the last eyeshadow palette that really stood out to me as something that I consistently reached for this year was the ColourPop Bare Necessities palette. I initially was a little bit disappointed by this palette only because I thought it was gonna be more cool toned than it was. And once I kind of got over that, that it's, it's not like a super cool toned palette, I ended up really loving this palette just for what it is, which is not a super cool toned palette, but I freaking love this and use it all the time, especially like the lighter shades right here. Like I love these ones and then the black. I love that there's a black in here. I'm wearing this palette today on my eyes. I just have like a mix of 
a bunch of the shades. I have this one on my inner corner, this shade mixed with like the goldish kind of shade. I have that one down first and then this one over top. I love that you can kind of like mix these to get like an interesting kind of lid shade too. I mean, ColourPop rarely releases bad palette. I don't even know if they ever have released a bad palette. Their formulas are pretty dependable. Like I feel like you can count on ColourPop to come out with good palettes. I also love their new Stone Cold Fox palette, but as far as just my yearly favorites, definitely Bare Necessities. Like this is one that I've been reaching for a ton this year. And I love that the black in here is good. Like it's a good solid black. So that is everything, but it was hard for me to compile a list down for this video. As I was going through everything, I feel like I tested a ton of products this year. So I had a hard time nailing it all down for this video, but these are, I think, like my most loved, most reached for just on a daily, weekly basis, what I wanna use. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. I'll have everything I talked about linked down below in the description box. Let me know what your most reached for items have been in 2020. Definitely check out my Raves and Rejects playlist and then I'll also link my past year's favorites because I still stand by those and still love those products. I just didn't wanna repeat any. So if you wanna know my other favorites, you can definitely watch those videos, but I love you guys. Thank you for supporting my channel this year. If you are new here and you found my channel in 2020, comment down below. We're not gonna get emotional right now. I'm just very thankful for you guys. I hope that in 2021, I'll be able to do another meetup and actually get to hug you guys once it's safe to and like put faces to the names and stuff down below. But obviously this year has been a hard year for everyone. I just wish I could hug all of you and I, I'm sending my love to you and your family and I hope you guys are all safe and I will see you in 2021. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.